Thank you for taking the time to join and actively participate in this Lunch and Learn, where we will explore the fine art of small talk. There will be several pauses throughout the session for group interaction. To get the most out of this learning, participate actively in these discussions. The more you participate, the more engaging the session will be for everyone. Also, you are encouraged to consider how to best leverage the ideas presented in your office. The training guide is designed for you to take notes of key ideas and best practices as the content develops. The icon in the bottom right will indicate when there is an interaction in your training guide. Today's session will include an audio version of the Git Abstract Summary. You have a copy in your training guide and can follow along if you would like. But please note it will not be word for word. Let's begin. Have you ever watched suave social butterflies in action? They effortlessly work a room, leaving everyone they encounter feeling flattered, charmed, and energized. Deborah Fine unabashedly studied these golden few extroverts while hiding in the corners of various business functions. She then asked, researched, and answered the question, how do they do it? In this analysis of The Fine Art of Small Talk, Fine shares the secrets of how to introduce yourself, make a connection, and initiate and sustain a meaningful conversation. Conversation no-nos. Beware of the following eight negative personality types that will kill a conversation. The FBI agent assails the other person with an onslaught of questions in an interrogation, not a conversation. Braggarts or braggaritas talk endlessly about their exploits. The third type, the one-upper, can't wait to top someone else's story. The monopolizer talks without letting others have a turn. The interrupter focuses on making his or her point but is too impatient to let others finish making theirs. A poor sport refuses to engage in chatting and answers open-ended questions with show-stopping, one-word answers. The know-it-all can kill a conversation by not showing any interest in anyone's opinions. And last but not least, the advisor is one who claims to know the solution to each problem and offers it without invitation. In your training guide, write down the name of someone who has a consistently positive attitude. And then, write down the name of someone who has a consistently negative attitude. As a group, without sharing their names, discuss the characteristics of each person that made you think of them as positive or negative. Servant leaders seek to understand others' priorities and values and help them make choices to realize their aspirations. This may include helping others identify their priorities and values if they aren't consciously aware of them. This relationship is much more like an advisor. The servant leader offers resources and advice when asked, but the employee is self-directed. Most importantly, the employee knows the servant leader has their best interests at heart. Servant leadership provides tangible and worthwhile benefits to the workplace. It's true. Let me walk you through that math. The firm's average billable rate is $200 an hour. So 90 minutes equals $300. At the end of calendar year 2018, we had 1,940 client service personnel. 1,940 times 300 equals $582,000 in one day. The total working days in an average year is 260, minus 10 holidays, minus 14 days of paid time off equals 236 working days. So 236 times $582,000 equals $137,352,000. First, determine what to do. Start by examining and cleaning up your to-do list. If it's filled with tasks with assorted due dates, it's probably long and overwhelming. If you've then thrown in some items you couldn't say no to, your list is probably downright frightening. When appropriate, delegate tasks that someone else could do. Drop time wasters from your day, such as repeated email checks and internet visits. Instead, 
set aside specific time to check emails and specific time to work on tasks. Imagine that you are trying to review a document. If you stop reviewing every time a new email comes in, you will be reviewing far longer than necessary. To decide what stays on your list, estimate your personal return on investment, that is, the value you offer your company. Can you demonstrate that you've earned or saved your firm at least three times your base salary each year? If you can't determine a financial value, find a way to show how your company would suffer from your absence. For example, list your 10 most important responsibilities and compare whether they match your manager's perception of your priorities and values.